exciting adventure of Banana Man and the house on Hangman's Hill. At 29 Acacia Road lives Eric, the schoolboy who lives an exciting double life. But when he eats a banana, an amazing transformation occurs. He becomes Banana Man, ever alert for the call to action. Accompanying Banana Man on his adventures is his feathered friend, Crow. Crow never gets in a flap and is always on hand to help and encourage. It was a stormy night, Banana fans, a night when most folk were indoors, huddled around the fire. But if you were made of sterner stuff, turned left at the corner shop, past the gasworks and up Hangman's Hill, you would have come upon two shadowy figures near the old mansion, Banana Man and Police Chief O'Reilly. Look, there it is, Banana Man, the house on Hangman's Hill. Oh, yes standing empty for years and now all of a sudden it's haunted haunted yes people report weird lights Fights. strange noise. noises what kind of noises chief o'reilly the creaking of a hangman's noose the thump of a wooden leg that sort of noise ah listen there it is they say it's the ghost of ollie earnshaw the one-legged highwayman he was hanged on this very hill 300 years ago and still hanging, hanging around, around, eh, yes, Chief? Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> yes. Right, I'm going in. What? You're, you're going in there alone, Big B? You know my methods, O'Reilly. Meanwhile, down in the basement dungeon of the house on Hangman's Hill, those infamous villains, the heavy mob, were engaged in one of their crooked schemes. Their leader was Eddie the Gent, and he, with Morris the Muscle and Rembrandt, were producing fake banknotes on their own private printing press. Gosh, Eddie, counterfeiting. When you said we'd be making big money, I didn't think of this. Yes, well, just leave the thinking to me, Morris. Hold it. There's someone moving out there. Get your stations, men. No one must discover this counterfeiting operation. If any busybodies enter, just scare the daylights out of them, would you? But it's night time, boss, I think. There you go again, Morris, thinking. Oh, sorry, Eddie. Back at the entrance to the house, Banana Man opened the front door. Hello? Anybody at home? Uh, no, no. Uh, we've all gone to the jumble sale at the scout hut. Sorry. I see. Deserted, eh? Hmm. Wonder what's in here. <laughs> Must be the den. As he walked through the entrance hall, Banana Man was spotted by a member of the heavy mob who was hiding in a suit of armour and smoking a large cigar. Banana Man turned and noticed the smoke billowing out through the visor of the steel helmet. Oh, it could be internal combustion or just a hot night. Banana Man picked up a fire bucket and filled the suit of armour with water. I can't swim! Save me! Quickly, Banana Man unscrewed the waterlogged helmet and discovered the cowering crook inside the suit of armour. Well, well, Rembrandt. So the heavy mobs behind this so-called haunting Start talking. What desperate crime is being committed here, and where's Eddie the gent? I'll be reasonable, Banana Man. Anyone who squeals on Eddie, well, he's peeled his last banana. Listen, listen, I'll just tell you this. You will find something interesting in the library. You mean books? Banana Man entered the library. He walked along a wall lined with ancient portraits, which turned to watch him as he passed. Strange how those eyes seem to follow you everywhere in the room. Aha! I was right! There are books! Banana Man took a book from a shelf. This triggered the action of a secret panel, which swung round, taking him with it. 
so that he finished up on the other side of the wall with the heavy mob, who were all grouped round a printing press. And it was the press that was making the noise like the thump of a wooden leg and the creak of a hangman's noose. Hmm. Oh, Eddie the Jet, a printing press. So that's your game. Game? <laughs> no, banana man. We're, we're just printing some hymn sheets for the vicar. Those hymn sheets, Eddie, they're very small. They're for a very small choir. Mm, uh, all the same, let's see what Chief O'Reilly makes of them. Come on, you two. Banana Man took a bundle of newly printed banknotes, grabbed Eddie the Gent and Morris the Muscle by their coat collars, and flew up and away with them into the air. Careful, Banana Man. Uh, uh, put me down, would you please? Oh, oh, I can't look. I think I'm going to faint. Oh. I suppose there's no chance of an in-flight movie, Banana Man? Oh, I thought not. Back at the police station with Chief O'Reilly, Banana Man held a note up to the light and examined it expertly. Excellent workmanship, eh, Chief? Perfect in every detail, even the watermark. But tell me, how did you know they were counterfeit? Banana Man, there's no such thing as a nine-pound note. Of course.